Hey guys, welcome to the Fast Night Podcast here with episode 189. This is your host, Overo. Guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, kind of different setup, kind of the same. I just, different chair, different table. I have a table, you probably can't see it. But the reason why we're set up this way is because we will start live streaming. Um, you know, a few days a week, really like two, the goals two, um, and, and just see how we do from there. But I do want to start live streaming and um and this is why the setup's like this so it's kind of like two and one this is the live stream setup and this will be the pod setup so no this an additional uh things to uh, make the you know live stream setup so that's why we're set up this way but you know for you guys it still might look the same and hopefully you know it's uh better i don't know i think i will do better because my hands are rested i have my paper here um you know and if i will in the future i'll have my laptop or things like that i have my phone so easier for me so hopefully that makes me make better content for you guys all right guys on this episode uh i will talk you know we're back into our normal schedule so this will be out on tuesday wear my dallas cowboys jerseys because i believe we will win the division today i don't think the eagles will pull it off i think the jets pull off i mean the giants pull it upset and and we get the w in washington but that's why i'm wearing this uh hopefully and I don't think I have, except for once this season, uh, look like a, a fool wearing this jersey on the pod. But guys, we have UFC 300 um, uh, coming up in April, I believe. And I kind of want to talk about my dream card. Also, who I think is going to be on the card. Um, and then I want to talk about Aliyah Topuria a little bit. And a little bit also to kind of uh, my goal. Uh, I know I've talked about my goals, but just kind of reiterate you know, the direction that we're going into is the podcast. I had a nice break over the, the holidays and really got to think and was watching certain things. And I was like, man, I want to do something like this. So I want to talk a little bit about that uh, real quick. Um, I, I really want to build a community now. I want to, uh, you know, interact with people, not necessarily like me, but, you know, people that, you know, when we're watching fights, we can be like, bro, did you see that? Or like, what did you think about the fight? Or like, that shit was rigged or robbed or robbery um, or, you know, just things like that. Or like, what, you know, because after a fight, I find myself just wanting to talk about it. I just want to see the post-fight interview. I want to see uh, the Octagon interview. Like, I'm just so invested uh, right after a fight. And I'm like, I just want to interact. And sometimes I interact with my my boys and sometimes they're asleep or they don't really watch the fight or things like that and i was like man i just want to hop on a chat or on a live stream and just talk about the fight and and i was like that's something i really want to do and i'm going to start to pursue that you know and you'll start to see those things happening after big events or ufc events i'll go live stream just to talk about the fight what's next and and things like that and that's something that i want to do um also too you know i feel like last year was kind of a growth year and i still want to grow this year but I, I, like I said, I just want to build a community. I, I kind of want to build a, a interactive Discord uh, where we can talk about UFC, we can talk about other sports in there, um, and just memes, and, and just have a good time, right? And, and that's really what I want to do. Whether it's a hundred people, ten people, five people, a thousand people, like I don't really care, you know. But I, I just want to have a community, and uh, and just have a good time with people um, all around the world. And we all have, you know, similar interest. And uh, also, you know, I think social media has gotten to the point where um, it's really, really toxic. Let me reply. It's gotten really, really, really toxic. And everything that I post, I ha I see at least for the most time a negative comment one once they like, on and every video, you know, it's like you don't know anything, um, you know, you said this name right or wrong uh, or things like that. Right. And and it's really starting to uh, get annoying, you know, because I don't just see it in my content and um, I, I see it on other content, too. And also, too, when people post, you know, especially on Twitter or X, um, they say the wildest shit to get people's attention. And I'm like, why are people doing this? Like, and I get it. They want the views. They want the clicks or they want to get people riled up. I get it. Right. But I just think it's so ugly. Like I'm like, like when I see, like, it's so hard for me to go on social media and see a post and, um, and take them seriously when they say some off the wall shit, you know, like, Oh, so-and-so is better than this person because like, and I'm just like, what, 
you know, or, or they shit, uh, shit on this certain fighter because of, you know, like Volkanovski. Like when Volkanovski lost, like every, and Izzy too, um, like everyone turned against Izzy and now everyone's like, Izzy's like this bad person. And I'm just so confused, like, l like just really confused because it just, it don't make sense to me. And I get it. Not a lot of people might like, not like Izzy. But Izzy's in the UFC, and he's there to fight. He's not there for you to like him. He's not there, you know, to judge him off whatever he does outside the octagon. He's there to fight, and he gets paid to fight. And that's why we watch him, right? So it's just annoying that people are so invested on other things about, you know, these fighters. Because all I care about and, and why I love the sports because I want to watch people fight. I don't give a shit what you do after, before, or, you know, outside your life. You know, I see comments about, I talk about like why Izzy was getting so hated and it's like oh about his dog who i don't give a shit about his dog it's his dog like i'm just being honest i don't care about his dog right i care about what he does in the ring and how he trains it and what he's achieved in the sport that's why i'm a fan of israel desanya now like i said some things he says and does are very questionable like well, like what the hell you right but i don't care man like i'm sure there, I, there's things that i do that are very questionable like what are you doing right and we all have those things, but I get it. You know, they're in the spotlight and things like that. But uh, back to what I'm trying to get to is that in the community that I really want to build, it's just like I, I want to get rid of all that, you know, and I really just want to build a community where we can just have a good time, you know, where you're just sitting down with your boys, just shooting the shit or when you're playing the game on the mic and having a good time. That's what I want to build, you know, with the false nine because that's when I'm the happiest and like, you know, and having a good time. And, and I just want to like, I just want to do that times, you know, two, three, four, whatever it might be. Right. So that's the goal, you know, and for those who are listening and, and like, that's something that you want to be involved in or, or, or be in a community like that, then this is the place to do it, man. Like, like I said, this is the community that I want to build where we can just shoot the shit and have a good fucking time. No negativity, no shit talking like that. And we can say, man, this person sucks and laugh it off. But like, don't get all upset about it, you know, like so-and-so, like I said this, but don't get all butthurt about it and make this big deal out of it. Like, I I'm just talking shit, you know, and, and that's all I wanted it to be. That's all I wanted it to be. And when I say my shit on, when I say Islam Makachev is not good enough and this, this, and that, like, that's just how I feel. I know Islam Makachev is pound for pound and he's probably the best fighter on the UFC roster right now. But, hey, you haven't fought the guys that Charles Oliveira has fought. And that's why I don't, you know, you don't, I'm not really like, oh, he's him. But, you know, but that's just me. So. Yeah, uh, just wanted to put that out there, um, and I want to make it pretty clear what, what the false nine is now and, and the direction that we're going to head to. And I'm saying this now with a, a little bit of uh, followers or subscribers and views, but, you know, for the people who are here and that's something that you might be interested in or that's something that you just want to be part of, then just stick around. And if not, if you want to be with that negativity, toxic shit, like, just get the fuck out, you know? Um, or if you just want to watch and be entertained, then, you know, good for you. But yeah, we're not doing that negativity, uh, that toxicness uh, or anything like that. And then I need to do to be better with that, too, when I talk about certain fighters and and, and uh, make sure that I'm not just talking shit or trying to be toxic and things like that. So just wanted to make that clear. Um, I already kind of burned eight minutes. like Jesus. So, OK, we're going to get right into it. UFC 300, my dream card, or I think this is the card that's going to happen. This card takes uh, place in April. We have Volkanovski and Ilya Torpudia fighting in about two, three weeks. Yeah, right. Then we have Sugar Sean O'Malley versus Cheeto happening as well in March. Um, I'm trying to think if there was it 297, 298. I forgot who's 299. Let me see. It's going to be Sean O'Malley and Cheeto. That's 299. Okay, so those are the, the pay-per-views coming up. And then we have UFC 300. So, you know, Sugar Sean um, and... Ali, I mean, not Aaliyah, Volkanovski, possibly Aaliyah. Uh, you know, they're already going to fight this year. So I doubt Sugar Sean's going to be at UFC 300, uh, like fighting, because uh, just a month apart. Now, uh, for Volkanovski and uh, Aaliyah and anyone else who's on that UFC 298 card, I think they could possibly make it to UFC two, uh, 300. So so we have like Volkanovski, Aaliyah, Marab, Henry, uh, and then Tai Tuvasa, Tatiana, like everyone on who's fighting on that card, I think they could make it to uh, to 300. Now, um, I'm going to say these fights, uh, no specific order. 
uh, you know, I'm talking about certain fighters too that I think will be on the card. Like Volkanovski is one of them. I think if he manages a good, clean fight, I can see him being on that card. Um, you know, so I'm going to mention that. So when I say this, don't be like, oh, you should have put this one first. It's, it's not in any specific order. Um, I just wrote it down like how I thought, you know, they're going to be on this card. Um, and then for UFC 300, I think the only one that really matters is the main event. So that's that. Another thing too, guys, like UFC 300, being UFC 300, it's a milestone for the UFC. But um, it doesn't have to be the biggest UFC card ever. It probably has to be one of the best of the year. But, I mean, I think uh, people are setting up this, like, pedal store, like, this expectation. Like, the UFC delivers most of the time. Like, uh, when I talked about that, uh, you've, when Brandon Moreno fought uh, Pantoja, Volkanovski, and Yair, like, that card was insane, right? Um, so, th you, the UFC always delivers, I think, on most fight cards. So, I don't expect, like, craziness but i just expect a pretty stat card like what happens towards the end of the year um so i think people don't need to lower their expectations who expect like the wildest shit ever now i'm pretty sure the ufc wants to deliver and capitalize on that and make as much money as they can but um yeah so because I, I see a lot of stuff man like oh the ufc is going to disappoint the ufc never really disappoints with fights like we're just being like if we're keeping it real 90 percent of the time they deliver so, yeah. All right, guys. So, let's get right into it. The uh, UFC 300 uh, predictions on the fight card and who I think and who I want to see. I'm going to start off. Israel Adesanya versus Alex Pereira for the light heavyweight title. Um, we've seen a lot of teases of, of this fight happening uh, after Alex beat yeah, uh, Yair. What? Yuri. My bad. I was going to say Yair. Yuri Prozarka. He called out Izzy and said, come to daddy. Right? So, I think... That being that call out, Israel Adesanya is really a fighter who doesn't really get called out like that because he's been so dominant. Um, so he really kind of picks and chooses who he's going to fight next. Um, and then Israel Adesanya saying, like, you know, people really thought I was going to be out for this long. Uh, we've seen him been posting some stuff with training or other pages been posting like he's been out training, getting in shape. So I think that fight's going to happen at UFC 300. Alex Pereira posted a story too, uh, 30, or, or teasing, I think, uh, going up to the heavyweight division. I don't know. He, he posted three plus 300. I don't know what it was, the math. But it, it, it seemed like a third fight, which would be Izzy. Um, 300, UFC 300 equals who knows what. So... I just think like that's it. Israel Adesanya versus Alex Pereira. I think that's going to happen. And honestly, like for Izzy losing his title against Sean, um, and it's like there's really I don't know who else he could fight because he kind of already beat everybody, almost beat everybody twice. Robert Whitaker, uh, Vittori, uh, Jared. Uh, I think he fought Jared twice. If not, I mean, I, I want to say it was twice. I don't know. But he, he's beat most guys already in the division. So, you know, for Alex to get the win and get the call out, I think it's the best thing that could have happened to Izzy, if I'm being honest. And um, it kind of gives him a chance to, you know, just get, uh, you know, get another a shine and also do possibly be a double champ, right? And who knows if he'll stick up, he'll stick in the division and try and defend his title. But I think it's pretty badass if, if that fight happens and, um, you know, if Izzy wins, awesome. If Alex Pereira wins, awesome. Like, you know, it's just a fight, and I would like like to see one of those guys, you know, just come on top. And I really, I, I would prefer Izzy, but, I mean, if I saw Alex win, I would be really happy with that, too. So, that's that one. Um, I guess I'll talk about this title, other title fight. We got Islam Makachev versus Justin Gaethje uh, for the, uh, what's it, lightweight title, if I'm not mistaken, or lightweight division. Uh, Islam Makachev being the undisputed champion at 155, hasn't defended his title against somebody at 155. He was going to do it against Charles. Charles got hurt, pulled out. Yeah, right? So, this is going to be, I think this should be his first title defense. Um and against a contender like Justin Gaethje, right? So I'm a big Charles fan. I love Charles Oliveira. That's one of my favorite fighters, probably like second or third. And, um, you know, you got knocked out or you got submitted, and then you go get a nice W against Benil, and then you get an injury literally a week before the fight. 
um and you kind of set yourself back because as much as i love charles it's a setback right um and you kind of uh you took away from islam you took away from the ufc you took away from the fans and um i think it would be a little bit frustrating for fans for islam and for the ufc to kind of do the same thing and hope that everything comes out okay um and i think if you go in a different direction with islam makachev at the division it's just kind of refreshing and I think motivating and exciting for Islam and for the UFC to kind of make it happen and push it to make it work. Right. So I can understand why they would. I understand. And I think they should have Justin Gaethje because Justin Gaethje got that crazy, crazy knockout against uh, Dustin Poirier. And um, I mean, it's like Justin Gaethje's at his point in his career where he has one more shot at gold. This is it. And he's not getting any younger. Um, and we just want something refreshing in the, the division. So Islam Akachev and Justin Gaethje makes perfect sense. Um, so I just would like to see it. It would just be refreshing, right? It would just be a different fight stylistically. Um, I know it would be Justin Gaethje's third shot at the title. But, hey, like, he's been around for a long time. Very respected fighter in the division. Has accomplished a lot in the division. And just recently got a massive uh, W, right? So... I, I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense, and I think he can give Islam a good run for his money. So why not, right? Why not make that shit happen at UFC 300? Um, I will say, though, I know I don't know what the religion is. I, I want to say it's Muslim. Um, they do. I don't know what it's called. I'm not even going to try. They have something going on and where they don't need things like that, right? So I don't know how that's all going to work out if if they do, because I think that starts in March for them. I think it's kind of the same thing as uh, like kind of when Easter is happening, like that period when uh, you give. I think it's called Lent. I'm sorry, you know, people that are religious. I'm getting this information wrong or not really knowing it. But I and for saying similar, I'm sure some people would get offended, but I just don't know. Right. So I don't know how that's all going to work out. Right. But uh, I would that's just a fight I would like to see. And, uh, you know, why not? Like, it's just refreshing. It's just refreshing for the division. So that's that one. Now, talking about the same division, Charles Oliveira, and I think this fight will most likely happen. I, well, I know Charles is fighting on this card. There's just no doubt. Um, but Charles Oliveira versus Armand Sorokin. Now, that fight gets me excited, and I think it gets the division excited. Both guys uh, knocked out Benil Derouche. Um, Charles Oliveira clearly has a better resume, and people can say what they want, but he just does. Um, Armand, young, hungry guy. Uh, got a nice, impressive knockout against Benil Derouche. Called out, I don't even know if he called out anybody, but he was talking about Islam and how he fought Islam and he was young and how it was a close fight, which, you know, I have mixed emotions about that too. Um, but that's a fight. I think that needs to happen in UFC 300. And whether Islam or Justin Gaethje happens or not, but whoever comes the winner, like, there's just no question. Uh you know, who needs to fight for the title. And for Charles Oliveira, like, you know, there's nothing wrong with not, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with not fighting for the title um, because his resume is fucking insane, you know? And of course it would be a lot better if these were title defenses against these big names, but it's just like, he, he's still creating his own legacy in his own way. And um, and if he's not fighting for a title, there's nothing wrong with that, man. Like he's just creating a legacy. And, and um, you know, for Armand, he wants to start a legacy, and there's no better name. You know, if you were to beat Charles Oliveira, like, you beat Charles Oliveira, who was a, a champion, and who beat, you know, Justin, Dustin, Chandler, like, these big names, and then that's a good way to start off your your legacy, right? And and that fight would be really, really, really entertaining, and I think it would be really good. Um, and again, not giving any predictions, I just want to see these fights happen, so... That fight's exciting, and I would love to see that UFC 300 as well. Uh, and let's see what else we got. And then we have Belial Muhammad versus Leon Edwards uh, at 175. Yeah, 175, 155, 175, or 170, 170. Yeah, before I get shit on it, it's 170. Um, so Leon Edwards is coming off a W and uh, a few weeks ago, if not a month ago already against uh kobe covington and just kind of embarrassed kobe covington a lot of people i saw some comments on my youtube when i got back and was like how kobe covington did good and how leon didn't embarrass kobe 
and and he did. Kobe looked lost for like the first three rounds, just no answers at all. Um, and he picked it up in the fourth, and then he did really good in the fifth, but just looked lost, right? And, and when you, when you get put in a position like that in a fight, you know, Leon Edwards did that to you. So um, a good title defense, second title defense for Leon Edwards, which is not easy to do in the UFC. Uh, and you have a contender who's been bugging and bugging and bugging and annoying the fuck out of me and a lot of UFC fans as well. And that's Bilal Muhammad. But I will not deny the fact that there's no other contender besides Shafkat. But Shafkat's resume um, is not, and I'm not saying that it's not impressive, it is. But it's, you know, Bilal Muhammad, in my opinion, just has a little bit of that edge over Shafkat's resume. And I think that's why he deserves a title shot. Um, now, I would love to see Shafkat and Bilal fight. But then who's Leon Edwards going to fight? So it makes sense to not have those guys fight each other. You know, just have Leon fight one. And then if he defends the title, fight the next guy. And, you know, just make it nice and entertaining. But Bilal Muhammad is is the number one contender. And uh, he needs to be fighting Leon Edwards at UFC 300 for the uh, 170. What is it? I don't even know if it's. Yeah, I'm not even going to try and say the, the, the weight class because I really don't know. And I don't want to look at it. So, um, you know, I think. That fight is a little bit on the uh, not it would be a tough fight for Leon, but Leon is so sharp, so good. So, um, I think he gives Belil a really hard time, and I, I just can't see him beating Belil Muhammad. I mean, I can't see Belil Muhammad getting a W or having much success against a fighter like Leon Edwards. So, that's that. Um, we also so that's that, I, and that people talk about how that fight's supposed to headline, and I would not be bothered if that fight headlined. You know, if we have like Charles Izzy on that same card, like I said, I don't really care who headlines as long as we have these stacked fights in in there. So, uh, Belil Muhammad, Leon Edwards, supposed to rumored that's supposed to headline, and like I said, I don't really care, man. As long as we have these stacked fights on on the fight card, then I'll be I'll be happy with that. Uh, I just want to have, I just want to have a good card. That's all I really care about. Um, and then, uh, we have, I think that's really it as far as the fights that I think are going to be on that card. Now we're going to talk about specific names. Um, I don't really have opponents for them, but specific names. The first one that I'll start off with is Jorge Masvidal. He said unretired. Um, also, Later on, I think days later, he said like he's not going to be fighting in the UFC. But you know, rumors, 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 right? So I don't know. Like I think he could possibly make an appearance. People are saying like him versus Justin Gaethje for the BMF belt if Islam Makachev, you know, doesn't fight. Um, so who knows? Um, but you know, also too, Justin Gaethje said he's only wants to fight for the title now. But I don't know, man. But Jorge Masvidal is the first name on the list that I thought about that could be on the UFC 300. And I think we will have a vintage appearance like Nate Diaz as well is another one. Um, we could have Nate Diaz and, and Jorge again, but I don't think I would want to see that. Um, so, yeah, like we can, you know, see somebody like that, like like Jorge or Nate Diaz on the card. Another name is going to be Sean Strickland uh, and Drake is Duplessis because they're also fighting in a few weeks uh, as well. Wait, so Volk's fighting in February. I'm sorry. Volk's fighting in February, and Drake is in Sean is in January. My bad for getting that mistake earlier. So, you know, fighting so soon, you know, it gives them, it's like almost three months away still after they fight. I think we can see Sean and Drake is, or I don't know, right? Just one of those guys on that card as well. Sean Strickland's a very, very active fighter. Um, So I, I, I think he could make an appearance, you know, depending on the result. I'm sure it depends on whether he should, like, if they have a fight for him or not. And same thing for uh, Drake is Duplicis. Like, if he gets a W or loses, I can see him coming back and being on that card. He's, uh, you know, like, uh, he's a fan, not fan favorite, but he has a pool. So uh, it would be good to have him on the card. And like I said, same thing for, for Sean Strickland. Um, another name would be Volkanovski. And I said that a, a little bit earlier. Volkanovski, you know, is fighting. I, I, now I know it's February, but he's fighting in February. And he's a guy that, like I said, very active, wants to keep fighting. And I think he's a fighter that wants to fight at UFC 300. So I can definitely see Volkanovski fighting on this card. Um, 
And then the last name on here, or not one of the last names, is Dustin Poirier. Dustin Poirier has talked about fighting um, at UFC 300 and how it would be a dream for him. And I think, honestly, if he fought at UFC 300, I think it would be his last fight in the UFC. And, that, I mean, you know, you get a nice W um, at UFC 300. I don't think there's a better way for uh, Dustin Poirier to walk away from the sport. And, um, yeah, so we will definitely see Dustin Poirier. I don't think there's any doubt in my mind that we won't, but I just don't know who he, he, who he would fight, right? Um, and then this last one, this last one, this last one, one more. So we got Tom Aspinall versus uh, Stipe Miocic. Um, I don't know. I have some hope that this fight will happen. You know, John Jones being the heavyweight champion, very hurt. And like I said, we're not going to see John Jones fight till the end of the year. Um, when he does come back, if he does come back, and um, I think it's a bit unfair for the division. I know Dana White, Stipe, they made it very clear that they want that fight to happen, Stipe and John Jones, and Tom Aspinall has been very vocal of how it's frustrating, um, and, and I agree with him. You know, he's an interim champ. He had an amazing performance taking those fight, that fight and made that fi fight happen at late notice. Same thing with uh, Sergey Pavolic. Um, but he's he had an impressive win in, like, you know, he needs to be active and he needs to be fighting and he should be fighting for a title shot like before May this year. That's that's just how I feel. And that's just what I think. And I think that there's a lot of people that agree with me on that. So, yeah. So that's UFC 300. Uh, you know, my thoughts, my predictions, um, what I would like to see on that card. So let me know, guys, if I'm missing a name, missing a fighter or missing a name fight. Same thing. Um, or a or a fight in general, right? You know, maybe I got one of these mixed match, and you might think like, oh, it makes more sense that you know Armand and Justin Gaethje fights, and Charles and Islam should fight. You know, things like that. So, um, yeah. So that's UFC 300 again. Let me know in the comments what you guys think that card's gonna look like. Um, and yeah. So let's move on to the last thing or the last topic here. Elia Topuria. I want to talk about him because, like I mentioned in the beginning of the pod. A lot of weird things on social media now, kind of toxic, a lot of headlines, things like that. And uh, a lot of people are talking about, like, if Aliyah is a fucking, like, if he's been in the UFC for a long time and if, if he's defended uh, his title at least five times in the UFC, like, that's just how I see people speak about Aliyah in, you know, social media. And I understand, like, it's social media and it's just, like, a whole bunch of BS for most of the time. But I just get really annoyed. I'm like, bro, what has Aliyah accomplished in the UFC that you guys, like, just think that he's just going to mule or run through Volkanovski, right? Um, and it, I find it a bit disrespectful to to uh, Alexander Volkanovski. Like, if I'm being honest, like, um, this dude's been champ for a long time. I, I mean, I could probably tell you guys how many title defenses Volkanovski has and in I mean, volkanovsky has been in the UFC longer than Aaliyah has. He's probably defended the title as much as uh, fights that Aaliyah has had in the UFC. So it's just like the disrespect is a little, I don't know, man. Like, I, it's just, it's kind of shitty, you know, for for the, uh, from the UFC fans. So let me just find it. Let me just find this record. Uh, 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 uh. Why do they make this so difficult? <clears throat> all right so let's see i want to say he had his first title fight in 2019 so one two three four five six seven eight he's been in eight title fights his last eight spot his last eight last eight title fights going into his ninth title fight against Elia Topuria 2019 Elia's first fight in the UFC was October 10th 2020 since then you know go back to 2019 Volkanovski has defended his title eight or I want to say he's won it once and then lost against Islam so he defended his title I think six times if I'm doing the math right and and, and uh, Elia has been in the UFC since 2020 and hasn't fought anybody good so I'm like, where, where are you guys like getting this uh, data or information or fights that you guys think that he's just going to walk and give Volkanovski like a hard time? You know, uh, I don't think there's any fighter 
that re realistically is going to fight Volkanovski, that's going to get harder than Islam Makachev. There's nobody else. Islam Makachev is, again, one of the best fighters, if not the best fighter in the UFC right now. And I'm not a fan. But, you know, that he's just one of the best. And Volkanovski went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him in the first fight. Again, I still feel he won the first fight. And people going to be like, oh, you know about MMA. We all know Islam won. Like, get the fuck out of here with that, you know? Um, and, and it was a close fight. I'm not going to take that away. It was a close fight. But for people to also say, like, it was not close. It's like, you guys are fucking crazy. So I think he won that fight. And that was the hardest fight that Volkanovski's ever going to have. Ever. There's just no one else that's going to give him a harder fight than Islam. And if, if fighters get if fights get hard for Volkanovski, it's because he's getting old. It's not because the competition's better than him. It's just getting old. I don't think Volkanovski's gotten to the point yet where he's gotten older and he's slowing down. Um, I think that dude is still running nice and like is it's going to still look sharp against Ilya in February or January, whenever that fight happens. So again, I want to go over Ilya's resume record in the UFC. I don't really care what he did outside the UFC. His first fight in 2020 against Yosef Zala. Right, and let's see if um, and, and this guy Zalov has lost one, two, three, four fights in a row since fighting Elliot Turpudia. And uh, so that goes to tell you where that guy's at. Then he fought Damon Jackson in December of 2020. So, quick turnaround for Elliot there, but I mean, I would expect that fighting a I would say easy fight like that. Um, so then this other guy, Ryan Hall, looks like he's had some wait, 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 what hold on. Damien, I'm a Damien. So things fought Damien Jackson. Uh, where did he fight Aaliyah? So Damien Jackson fought Charles Rosa, Juan, Camille Kirk, Juan, Dan Ortega, Juan, Pat Sabatini, and Juan. That's impressive for him. Um, so that looked like it was a pretty, pretty good fight. And uh, he got a TKO. But then he fought Ryan Hall, Jay Herbert, Bryce Mitchell, which we all know, and Josh Emmett. Um, so it's like a pretty solid resume, but when you look at his resume and you look at Volkanovski's resume, I'm just like, this should not be a close fight. I get it. Aliyah is explosive. He's powerful. He got his crazy knockout power and he has, he's made some of these guys look like chumps, right? Like Josh Emmett and, and Bryce Mitchell. And let's make it pretty clear, right? Josh Emmett. And I've said this last year, and no disrespect to Josh, he had an amazing fight and got a beautiful knockout against Bryce Mitchell. But he, I, I was very confused why he was top five. Like, very confused. And again, not taking anything away from, from uh, Josh Emmett, but I'm like, why is Josh Emmett in the top five? I don't, I'm like, I, I just, I, it doesn't make sense to me. So, again, no disrespect. And, and Volkan like Volkanovski and, and Josh Emmett can't fight. Volkanovski will kill him, you know, and yeah, I'm using kill, like it's an exaggerated word, like he, it would just be, it, it, it would just be way different, right, it would just not be close, so, and same thing with Bryce Mitchell, Bryce Mitchell can't fight Volkanovski, it, that's just miles away skill gap, it, it's just huge, and, you know, Volkanovski can only fight the best of the best, who's been Max Holloway, recently Yair, which he wanted to kind of step into the athlete level of fighting but couldn't break that barrier. Um, and Volkanovski, like I said, Volkanovski is the best of the best. And you guys talk about Aaliyah like he's fought the best of the best. I want to see Aaliyah fight Yair. I want to see him fight Max Holloway. Uh, who's the other name there? I think Arnold Allen is the other name there in the top five. I want to see him fight one of those guys. And I want to see him have the sim a similar performance against uh, like what he did to Josh Emmett and, and Bryce Mitchell. Because, and I want to reference something, like when Hasmak Chemaev was on this crazy run, and he still has a lot of hype, right? But the hype to me is kind of not there as much as it, as it used to be. But when he fought uh, Gilbert Burns, look how that fight turned out for Hamzak. When he fought Usman... Look how that fight turned out. You know, like he, like everybody thought he was his fucking champ, like this beast. 
And, and people forgot about Gilbert Burns. People forgot about Kamara Usman. And, and I'm just like, that's what happens when you like have this crazy hype. And it's scary for Aaliyah because Aaliyah hasn't fought one of the best fighters in the division. And he is fighting the king of the division. And it's just like, I would not be surprised if Volkanasi goes, goes in there and just picks him apart and finishes him in three rounds. Like, I will not be surprised. Um, so, yeah. Like, I just don't, I don't get it, man. I don't get it with Leah. Don't get me wrong. He's a beast. And he looks like he has a lot of talent, talent and a bright future. But the disrespect of Volkanovski is is pretty, it's pretty wild, if I'm being real. So, that's that. Um, trying to see if anything else. So, but I think that's pretty much it. But, again, not no hate, no disrespect to Aaliyah. But, you know, let's not disrespect the, the champ of the division who's been the champ since 2019. And we're, we are entering the year of 2024. The champion over the three years. Uh, I'm trying to think of any. I don't know the records, you know, for the most title defenses. But he's probably getting close to one of the, uh, like, up there to to tie with the highest title defenses. So I want to say John Jones and Anderson Silva are definitely up there. But Volkanovski is probably not far away from that. And I think he will probably achieve one of those records. And, he, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So I'm not even going to go into detail. But, guys, that's the episode, episode 189. Hopefully it wasn't too long for you guys. But we're back into a regular schedule Tuesdays and Fridays. And uh, hope, you know, if you're a Colts fan, I feel bad for you. Um, you know, and I know there's a lot of NFL going on today. So I hope you guys watch a lot of football or just sports in general. And then we have an exciting week with Johnny Walker and Uncle Law fighting this Saturday. And then, you know, the following we have Drake and Sean. So we got some exciting fights coming up. So we have good content. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoy the episode. I'll see you guys on Friday. Peace.